Welcome to the regular Lighthouse Point City Commission meeting for December 11, 2018, the last meeting of our, the year. Call on Rabbi Decker, Chabad, North Broward Beaches to give an indication. Thank you. Almighty God, we stand before you in prayer. Look favorably upon the mayor and honorable members of the city council of our great city of Lighthouse Point. We beseech you, almighty and merciful God, to extend your grace to each and every member of this august body and bestow upon them the joy of life, good health, and prosperity. To bless these distinguished individuals who have been chosen to make laws and decisions for the citizens of our city. Grant these public servants wisdom and understanding in their noble pursuit of justice and equality. Give them guidance so that they will always be conscious of your presence and will strive to enact laws with honesty and integrity in accordance with your will. May they have wisdom to turn adversity into opportunity and to transform the hard challenges that we face today into seeds from which will sprout forth the growth for tomorrow. May our city continue to serve as a beacon of light for all people and faiths and walks of life. Let us say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. We'll call the meeting in order and do the Pledge of the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mayor Trost? Here. Commission President Joffe? Here. Commission Vice President Walker? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Here. Commissioner Long? Here. Commissioner Van Busker? Here. City Attorney Cirillo? Here. City Administrator Levisky? Here. Finance Director DePaulo? Here. Fire Chief Gil Martin? Here. Police Chief Lakata? Public Works Director Tram? Here. Recreation Director Leasing? Here. We're all accounted for. Uh, commissioners? First item on our agenda is this customary is approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of November 27, 2018. I assume everybody's had an opportunity to review those. Making a motion to approve. I'll second it. We have a motion of a second to approve the regular meeting minutes of November 27, 2018. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Finance Director DePaulo, Treasurer's Report, please. Good evening. General fund has two million eight hundred five thousand and one hundred fifty-two dollars and forty-three cents. Cleanup deposits thirty-one thousand four hundred dollars and no cents. Garbage and trash fund one million seven hundred forty thousand one hundred twenty-three dollars and three cents. Special purpose funds two million eight hundred seventy-eight thousand zero dollars and fifty-seven cents. Stormwater utility fund five hundred eighty-eight thousand one hundred four dollars and twenty-eight cents. Debt service fund two hundred ninety-five thousand eight hundred thirty-six dollars and eleven cents. Contingency five million four hundred eighty three thousand seven hundred forty eight dollars and no cents. General fund encumbrances three hundred two thousand one hundred sixty eight dollars and fifty eight cents. Total off funds fourteen million one hundred sixty four thousand five hundred three dollars and no cents. Commissioner's questions for our finance director. Frank, I gotta see them, but I have a quick one. I'm just looking at the uh, the kind of the cash balance report. I just see stuff on there I've been meaning to ask this, like recreation fund support, there's an entry there, zero balances for Playground 2015. Is there a reason we'll keep that on there? Uh, no, it just probably just needs to be cleared out. Okay. Delete it out. All right. Any other questions? No? Okay, no department Thank reports. Thank you, Frank. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Commissioner. Good. Frank. No, no, actually, I was going to actually, when you use department reports, I just had a question on our uh, projects. I know uh, Chuck was watching over the... Uh, Fiber optics is going in by AT&T on the 21st Avenue over there and 39th and uh, 28th and 29th all over there. I just want to have them update us on it because all of a sudden, yesterday I see them stringing new uh, pair. It looks like they're preparing to string new wiring up also. That's correct. Um, they've installed the underground. Um, quite frankly, I, haven't, I was not happy at all. This is the worst experience I've personally had with AT&T and the installers of the underground utilities. How so? Their MOT was non-existent. Nobody spoke English. I had to call the police. We have a meeting uh, regarding the double poles this coming Thursday. I'm going to meet with AT&T afterwards. Um, and we have a meeting set up with MassTech next Monday. Um, we're also going to discuss some things we can do with the city attorney as far as putting some teeth into some kind of permitting process that uh, prevents this from happening again. Um, it's one thing 
To have a few broken sprinkler heads or an improperly parked truck, it's entirely another to have half a dozen trucks parked on a blind curve with no MOT whatsoever. So I was flabbergasted. I couldn't believe it. I called the police. Uh, I, uh, you know, that I did everything I could. Um, we kicked them off the job. It's my understanding that they left for an hour or two, and then they came back. They proceeded to work. Um, it was a nightmare. So the underground is installed. The AT&T and the Mass Tech inspectors were in the field this afternoon. I didn't have time to walk through with them, but I will do that tomorrow. Um, so I'm prepared for the Thursday. And I have plenty of pictures as well. Good. I would just say that I contacted Chuck on that because of the amount of workers they had there with no MOT in place. Chuck was right on it. But one of the things is definitely I think is important that we have something in and within our code or whatever we could do to legally have some sort of teeth when they show up and they just start digging in front of people's yards and they got four or five trucks and they were parked in all different directions that hose running across the street. Um, so I definitely think that we need to put something or look at to see if there's something we could put on the books for that type of work being permitted or however we need to look at it for the future uh, within our city. Uh, I also hope that when we do these, uh, I noticed when they uh, strung up what they, I'm guessing is their guide, for where they're going to hang That's the new wire. It's like a mule tape. They'll cool. use it to pull. Right. Correct. So the interesting part was is they actually, there's, I have a double pole in my backyard, and they went to the old pole. Okay. So Good information. Thank you. For so I just like, I mean, it's almost impossible to recognize the fact that one pole is leaning and is brand spank and is, you know, is old, and the one is brand spanking new and only has that p &L on it, and they were hanging it off the leaning pole. What are the chances of you sending me a picture of that we, before Thursday afternoon? I've been more than happy to. Excellent. <laughs> Anything else? Right. Chuck, while you're up here at dredging, I see um, contract under review with the city of Pompano Beach. Sounds like we're making progress. How long has the contract been with them? And um, a couple of weeks. There's a lot of moving parts. I've, I've spoken to our dredgers. We have a target of our next commission meeting, which is January 8th, to have things squared away. We know that there's holidays and some vacations in here, and have our sublease squared away with them that's acceptable. And I can come back to you and say this has been reviewed internally and with the city of Pompano Beach, and it's acceptable, and we're going to move forward with this. I assume it's going to have to be approved by the Pompano Beach City Commission as well? That's correct. Okay. I would assume that as well. Yeah. Are we blessing it first and then sending it to them, or are they got to bless it first and send it they, to us? They, they want the... They've been instructed uh, through their city attorney to have the staff review it and um, approve it, and then I think it'll it'll get an upper level review. But Mr. Cirillo and Mr. Berman have discussed this as well. So um, I'm sure that um, I assume since it's a lease, it's an agreement, it'll have to be approved by the commission. But I think once it's been totally reviewed, that won't be an issue. Okay. All right. Thanks. Anything else for Chuck? All right. Thanks, Chuck. No reports from the city attorney, no committee reports. Next planning and zoning meeting is February 5th, 2019. Code enforcement, January 15th, 2019. Community appearance, December 20th, 2018. Special magistrate, January 9th, 2019. Marine advisory, February 7th, 2019. We have no unfinished business. We have one item of new business, which is discussion. Oh, I'm sorry, I did skip public comments. Thank you. Public comments and requests regarding agenda items. We have a couple items on our agenda. If you would like to adjust any of the items on our agenda this evening, come forth. We have three minutes to speak. There is time at the end of the meeting for public comment on anything, but this public comment period is limited to the items on our agenda. So if there's anything you'd like to discuss, come forward. State your name and address, and you'll have three minutes to speak. If it's on one of our agenda items, you feel free to come forward. It is not, so that time would be at the end of the meeting. You can come speak at the end of the meeting about that. Okay. Um, so now we're all, anything else on agenda items? Okay, no, so we'll close public comment on the agenda items. First item of new business now is discussion on Second Amendment to Settlement Agreement and litigation styled City of Sunrise et al. versus Broward County. 
And uh, I'll turn it over to our city attorney. Mr. President, members of the city commission, this is here tonight for your discussion and to provide direction on how you want to proceed this evening. Uh, just a little bit of background. This item is for a second amendment to a settlement agreement in a litigation on the South City of Sunrise versus Broward County. You may recall that back in 2013, the city commission authorized uh, the city to become involved in litigation regarding the uh, closure, so to speak, of the Resource Recovery Board. Um, and uh, that litigation uh, by several municipalities in Broward County against um, Broward County itself resulted in a settlement which the city commission approved back in 2015. One of the items in that uh, agreement was to agree on the selling of a piece of property known as the Alpha 250 property in Pompano Beach. And at the time of the sale, then the proceeds would have been distributed among all the parties to the settlement agreement. Um, and, and that was to occur, I believe, within one year. Um, in um, 2016, however, the City Commission adopted Resolution 2016, 2018, and joined all the other settling parties in that agreement to do a First Amendment to Settlement Agreement to delay the sale of Alpha 250 while a joint independent study was performed to study some issues regarding uh, recycling, recycling goals, whether uh, public ownership of the Alpha 250 property would serve the public interest or um, also and, and also to deal with general solid waste disposal issues. Um, pursuant to that agreement, in June of 2017, Broward County retained a group of uh, consultants which has been commonly referred to as Arcadis. Um, they commenced their work in October 2017, and um, up until uh, very recently, um, they have been working on that study. In August of 2018, the team conducted, the Arcadis team just concluded the study and issued an interim final report. Um, but about the same time, um, the um, expiration of the First Amendment was coming upon us. And so it was, an agreement was entered into with Broward County approving it first, and the settling um, municipalities would all have to agree to in a Second Amendment, which would extend the sale date of the Alpha 250 property for at least one more year and it provided for the opportunity for the working group of mayors, which is the initial group that started with the settlement and continued through with the settlement with the agreements and dealing with the Arcata study, uh, they could agree to extend it for up to three more one-year terms. Um, that is the item that is before you tonight for discussion. Um, the, in order to be effective, the Second Amendment needs to be approved by all the parties to the settling, settlement agreement. That would include the City of Lighthouse Point. Um, as of this evening, 21 cities have approved it within Broward County. Um, the remaining cities are Lighthouse Point, uh, Wilton Manors, which is con considering the item this evening, uh, Pembroke Park, which is considering the item tomorrow evening, and Cooper City, which is um, considering the item a week from tonight. So. What you have before you is in the backup is the proposed Second Amendment, as well as what I did is I wanted to refresh your recollection what the settlement was, so I put in the 2015 memo that outlined the terms as they would pertain to Lighthouse Point. Um, and you have here this evening uh, some representatives from Broward County um, and uh, the, the working group of mayors, um, Commissioner Bean Furr, Commissioner Lamar Alexander, um, you have Mayor Sturmer from Weston. Lamar Fisher. Lamar. 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 What did I say? Lamar Alexander. Alexander. <laughs> Where did you come up he with that from? He was a basketball player. I think Lamar Alexander is a basketball player. He was a vice president yeah. candidate. Where did that he come from? Vice president. Vice president. I apologize. Apologize. Lamar Fisher. I, I don't know. How that came into my head. I have no idea. Honestly, just spell his name. We know who you are. We know who you are. Very important person. I apologize. I apologize for that. Um, anyway, and then uh, Mary Lou uh, Ty from the Broward League of Cities is here. Um, they're here to respond to any questions the Commission has. You can hear from them. But at this point, I would turn it over to the Commission to decide how you would like to proceed this evening and hopefully get everybody's names right. <laughs> Uh, commissioners, we have some distinguished guests here tonight. I, you know, I kind of with the discussion. Do you guys have questions related to this? Uh, I mean, it is an important issue. Um, I, as you probably recall last time, have some philosophical differences or issues with the project in general and and actually how the settlement agreement is um, outlaid. Um, I'm willing to be convinced otherwise by the commissioners of these fine men who are going to probably try and do it here tonight. Women. But, women. you know, we're, uh, and women, thank you. Um, but how would you like to, how would you like to proceed? Do we want to have a discussion? Are there any issues that we should discuss internally? Do you want to 
propose questions. I'm sure these gentlemen and ladies have lived this issue for a long time and can discuss it and talk about it. So what is the will of the commission? They're here. I'd like to hear from them. Should we be more specific, though? Well, this could go on for hours. <laughs> well, uh, let, let's figure out what the issues are, and maybe they could address those. Well, I could go for hours with the issues. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I, 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 I mean, right. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward the fact that I would like to hear from them, but also, also they need to know what we're, our concerns mm -hmm. are. And I think that if they're unable to address them because they don't know what our concerns are, then so them coming up and speaking is only kind of what we've already heard or read. Uh, so to me, I may want to think that we should have a brief discussion to see what they could hit some of the concerns briefly. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Johnson, does that work for you? We go down and talk about some of the issues that we may have or questions we may have and then turn it over to our guests? Yeah. Okay, do you want to start down there, Commissioner Van Buskirk, then? Sure. sure. I mean, my biggest concern is, actually it's a multiple concerns uh, on the maybe not so much on the philosophical side of things like Commissioner Joffe, but my thing is very simple. We, we got out of the garbage business, okay? And the idea was when we signed our, in 2015, when we signed it, we decided that we were going to sell off the 250, and we were going to be out of the garbage business altogether. And the landscape has changed, and I don't disagree with that. But since 2015, we have still yet to even have a discussion up until the last 2017 when we got our CADIS and there, and we hired them to go ahead and start their process of giving us information on what that property could now be utilized for. It just, the wheels have moved too slow for me, and I believe that, listen, we decided at the time that it was time for the RV to go by its wayside, and that we were going to all separate ways, go about our happy, although very dysfunctional portion of it, how we got there. And I would like to see us say, listen, let's get rid of this off the 250 prop property, and let's start from the beginning, start fresh. I don't want to be starting on a broken marriage, let's put it that way. And uh, I, I think that, not that I disagree with anything that the uh, Arcadia, uh, Arcadia, sorry, uh, put out there. I just do believe that, hey, listen, we want to achieve some of these goals, specifically the 75% recycling, specifically utilizing our reuse. I, I think that all that's great, and I want to see it done. But I don't want to see it sitting back here in possibly another three or four years going, okay, now we've got this, and, and, and this is the next project, you know, that, okay, we got to do this next step. I would say, let's clean the slate, give you guys plenty of time to do what you have to do to figure out what the next step is for our county and how all the municipalities could get together and be one. So I, I think the time frame for a three-year extension is, is significant, and it's well within, I think it's not within reason. I think that they should have... 18 months if they really want to even talk about it, but besides three years is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Just too long for me. I want to move want to move past this. Commissioner Walker? Yeah, that, and I'll be very brief. That, that's my biggest issue is we just want to get this thing resolved. The bureaucracy is mind-boggling. I thought the report was very poorly done, difficult to understand. Uh, the grammar and, and editing was pathetic, and that makes me wonder you know, is the credibility of the entire study leaves me a little bit concerned. But the biggest issue is the three years. You know, it's, I think we want to move quicker than that. I think we just want to get it resolved. And I'm open to figuring it out. But if there's any way we can move this along at a, at a reasonable pace so we can get it off the board and get moving, then I'm fine. we got to do something. But I'm very concerned about three whole years, one supposedly, but it's, opted in there for another three if they need it, and that concerns me a great deal. I'd just like to get it resolved with as minimum bureaucracy as possible and get on with our lives, which we had hoped would be done long before now. Commissioner Law. You know, I kind of share some of the thoughts as far as it's taking a long time. Uh, there is that option up to actually four years. Uh, but I also have to look at what's best for our county and all the cities within it. And quite honestly, you know, you could say let's sell it, get our fifty or sixty thousand dollars. It's not going to make a difference really in our budget. Uh, what we're looking for is results that will be driven from this. And I think we need to kind of stand as as one with all the other cities that have done this and just move forward with it and see where it gets us and 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 continue to push, continue to ask for results. And I think you know the people who are here right now, they're looking for it as well. Uh, I wouldn't want to be the city that 
is the block to this. I think that would be short-sighted on our part. And we have to look at the greater good of the city, of the county, together. This is something that has to be resolved. No doubt about that. But to start nitpicking over years um, that may block this thing, I think, is just not wise. So, I mean, I would support it with the caveats of if you can move this thing faster. Obviously, it's the will of commission, probably almost every other commission you all have spoken to. So, you know, I'll, I'll move this along. Mr. Johnson. Uh, I totally agree with Mike. Um, I would like to see it shorter than three years, but if that's what they feel like they might need, then I'd be willing to give them the okay on that. Um, we do have to look to the future of what we are going to do with garbage and recycling and all that. And uh, since almost all the cities have passed it, I would be mortified if Lighthouse Point was the only city that didn't pass it and it made the whole thing not fly by. I think it would be very embarrassing. And uh, I think we need to work together with the other cities, with the county, and uh, get it rectified. But if it takes three years to do it, then so be it. I want to give them a chance and see what happens for the greater good of all of us. Um, so first of all, I want to thank, because everybody sitting here, especially I think Mayor Fur, uh, Commissioner Fur, Commissioner Stermer have worked a lot, and I haven't met the two. Women at the end of the aisle. Um, yeah, but I know you guys have spent a lot of time working on this and a lot of energy and effort have gone into it. Um, I am of a philosophical point that I don't want the city of Lighthouse Point in the trash business. I could probably be convinced that there should be some sort of foil to the issues that we face as a county, but Lighthouse Point is a small city and there are a lot of other small cities out there. So, again, this kind of dovetails into one of the other concerns that I have is looking at the end game. If I were to approve this, I still don't see myself agreeing in four years to what I would call RRB Part 2. I mean, that's really what this is. Um, I'd like to think you would, we would have all learned from our mistakes in RRB and come out with something better. And I could have gotten a little bit more comfort if that, quite frankly, I agree with Commissioner Mocker, that Arcadius report was a little bit better. I mean, that report to me was nothing. We want to we wanna reach a 75% goal. Um, we need the Alpha 250 property to do it. The, here are a bunch of different ways we could possibly achieve that goal, but there were no recommendations. We have no knowledge about what this, what I'm going to call RRB Part 2, would look like. What we do know is that, according to that report, what it could be is anywhere from a $288 million to a billion dollar enterprise. And for me, as a elected representative of the city of Lighthouse Point, that is just something that I don't want to get us involved with because it didn't end so well the first time. Um, I get that there's a greater good here, but if if I asked our constituents and the residents of Lighthouse Point if they wanted to achieve a 75% recycling objective, I think everybody, listen, how do you argue with recycling? Recycling is good, right? If I asked them should Lighthouse Point achieve the goal of 75% um, recycling, they'd all say yes. If I said to them, okay, we, we're going to do that, but um, we're going to have to form this maybe this special taxing district and this other government entity, it may charge you a fee, it may actually tax you, and we're basically going to, the city of Lighthouse Point is going to go into business with the county and the other cities in Lighthouse, uh, in the county, in a, what may be a multi-billion dollar business, I think, and we're a little bit different here in Lighthouse Point, as a lot of people know, I think they would look at us like we're crazy. I, I, I really do. I, I, so that weighs very heavily on me. And the other thing is, I, I think the three-year term which will be a total of seven years if it's all invoked, is way too long. I'm down for kicking the can, but that's a lot of can kicking down the road. And quite frankly, we're not even the ones kicking the can. Because that's my other concern is I feel like, and that's why I voted against the First Amendment, um, we are yielding as a city a lot of power to um, a small group of mayors who I no doubt have the, the best interests of everyone at heart, but I've been up here in public life three and a half years now, 
And when I see these type of agreements and these working relationships in the county, the small cities are always underrepresented. And you're going to say to me that's because we don't have a lot of population and it's, you know, the majority should rule. But I just feel like I don't feel like yielding the power and the authority to gain tax revenue for the resident or revenue for the residents of Lighthouse Point to um, to a group of mayors for the big cities. Always the big. It's always the big cities. Um, and I I get that it's probably too late in the ball game to change this because so many people. But if you were to come to a meeting and said there's going to be a small city representative at the mayor's working group, or if Arcadis had actually put something down concrete and said here's what the organization is going to look like, and a seat at the table, one of the decision makers is going to be a representative from one of the small cities in the county. I, I, I'm, I'm starting to move in that direction. But I just, you know, few and far between, quite frankly, are opportunities for the small cities in this county to exert some leverage. And right now, you know, I was joking around with people. I'll say it out loud. I thought I would never say it. I'm kind of channeling my inner Donald Trump right now. We never have leverage over the over the counties or the cities, you know. And right now we do. And I I think yielding all this power for up to four years, which is a total of seven years after this settlement agreement um, was passed, um, it, it's just it's just way too much. So I have a lot of really structural concerns with this, philosophical concerns. And so right now, I'm happy to give you guys the opportunity to respond. Um, I kind of, in a way, want to be convinced otherwise, but in good conscience, as an elected representative of, of this constituency, I'm having a hard time voting yes for it. Can I make just one comment? Absolutely. No, no. <clears throat> yeah. um, if I'm not mistaken, I was at one of the original mm -hmm. organizational meetings, and the smaller cities actually opted out, if I remember correctly, and handed it over to the larger mayors because they had the better wherewithal to deal with this than we did. But it was an option for us to be well, we one could of all the be, players. We could all, no. Well, this is what, I mean, just, we, I, I fully will admit that these meetings were public meetings, and I don't want to imply that the small cities or the elected representatives were, were precluded from it. But I'm talking a seat at the table, the decision makers. If you look at that First Amendment, yes, the, the, the decision, right. the final decision was vested in a small group of mayors from the large cities. And that's what I have a fundamental problem with. I, I want to make clear we all have the opportunity to chime in. I'm not trying to say there was anything secretive or under the table going on. But that's one of the main reasons I voted against the First Amendment. And it's kind of compounded here for an even longer period of time. So that's my, that's my concern with it. OK. What I, I wanted to say that I, I suspect that if someone from our city, our mayor, had said he wanted to be at the table for all these meetings all along that the large city mayors were involved in, I don't think they would have said no. But he wouldn't have had a vote. But they still would have been part of it. Yeah, no, I'm not and I don't that. think it's fair to say that the county and the, uh, doesn't take into account small cities. Because like in the MPO, I have, I'm on the executive board there representing the small cities. We have a large seat at that table. And I don't think that our city takes advantage of some of it. I mean, how many times do y'all go to the League of Cities? You know, that that's the backbone of all of our government in the whole county, and we're not involved. So sometimes it's our own fault that we don't get involved in these projects. So I don't really think it's fair to say that, you know, they, the big guys ganged up on us. And, I, and I, the only other thing I want to say is that you were here for three and a half years, and people were here for a different amount of times. A lot of these people have been involved for a lot of years and they, they're pretty smart and they study the background and they're not in there for their own good. We have county commissioners, we have uh, city, com um, city uh, mayor, just, a, just mayor of, of Weston, you know? And so it's not just the county that's trying to throw this down, it's, it's a combination. And I just think that if, you know, if we really were that into it, we should have gotten into it and we could have. But do we want, do, I want to ask this question, looking at the end game. Would you be comfortable with life, the city of Lighthouse Point literally being in the trash business? Li literally ponying up and being involved with another RRB-like organization? We're not from saying a, from, that from, now, from, though. From, we're giving them three more years to but, put it on. But seven, but seven years, I mean, philosophically, if I'm not inclined to do that, 
down the road or we're not inclined to do that, I don't understand why we wouldn't just fish or cut bait. Let me ask a question. Every other city, Broward County signs into it. Okay, let's just say there's a way that we could get out and we don't want to be in the trash business. What do we do? Well, no, and I, I would fully admit that probably if the, if the county down the road, you know, there is this thing called the Supremacy Clause. This could be thrust upon us. And if it was thrust upon us from the county, I would be all in and try and make it work. But there's a difference between it having thrust upon us and us voluntarily deciding to do it, in my mind. Okay. So, and just one question I have for you. You brought up that you believe the big city mentality kind of takes over the decision process and we're not considered because we're a small city. Do you believe in this case, is there something specific in particular that may pop out that would serve a bigger city moving forward with, as they negotiate? No, I, or are they I, going to be looking at the, you know, the collective cities? What, as what, what I said was that the First Amendment and this amendment vested the decision-making authority with the continuous holding of the Alpha 250 property in a group of mayors that all represented bigger cities. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen a small city representative with decision-making power. I didn't say we weren't excluded. I didn't say it was a big city mentality. So well, I'm just trying to think that, you know, by having it and not having a small one, do you think there would be a, a difference in the conversation and what would that be? Yeah, I think it's like, yeah, we're a small city with 15, a $15 million budget. Mm -hmm. We don't consume as much trash as some of the bigger cities. I think the smaller cities have a different interest. Going into this, a large organization like that with the RRB, there's liabilities associated with that. And I have seen nothing that would curtail or deal with any of that. So I think the interests of the small cities are quite different in, in, an, in an endeavor that could be in the hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars. So I, I think having the, uh, the small cities represented with real decision-making power, with a real vote, would give me some comfort. So I, I, think, I think that we have a different interest in trash for our residents than we do some of the other cities. Commissioner, you know, Commissioner dropping to your point is, no, I do not want to be in the trash business. I'll be very honest with you. I don't. I think this didn't work. I'm not saying that it can't work in the future, but it did not work. I would prefer we cut bait, move off, and if we have, over time, we all come back together and we sit together at a table where everybody's included, every municipality that did not part of the RRB or now will be part of our new RRB two-tier thing, could all sit down together put our collective minds together and say, okay, this is where we're going. But their argument's going to be, I'll make their argument for them, I think. No, no, I, but they're going to say that's not possible without, I think they're going to no. say that's not possible without Alpha 250. There are, I understand that, but we're hinder, we're, our hindrance seems to be on this one piece of property. There's plenty of property. The other times, that yes, might not be our right pricing, might not be where we want to put it, but ultimately, again, there are other pieces of property out there. And if the county feels so inclined that it's the, it's the end-all and be-all of property, then let the county buy it. They can buy it and they can hold it if it's, if it's so important to us in the end. I don't understand. I want to be completely out of this, this agreement, like we talked about. When we got back in 2015, I want to be out of this agreement. I want to say, okay, now let's go ahead and let's look at what we're going to do for the future. How are we going to do it for the future? And if the Alpha 250 comes back on the property and the county owns it, and they say, hey, listen, it's now worth six and a half or seven million, fine. And we pay an extra million dollars ultimately and with the collective body that goes into it. But then, I mean, listen, I, I just start to think about it. Well, these other cities that weren't in the original RRB, now how do they get in on the Alpha 250 property? Is there an extra fee for them? It, uh, we're, we're, you know what I mean? It's just, that to me, it just let's make it a clean cut. If the relationship is going to be so great on this next go around, then guess what? It will be. I just don't want to see why we just start off on a, on on kind of like this weird stepping stone as far as I'm concerned. So the answer to me is no, I do not want to be in the trash business under this agreement. We decided we do not want to be in the trash business. We wanted to move ourselves away and we should come back and if this I know you guys are really big on it, but you're right. The arcade is probably the wording, the verbiage, all that stuff. Even a simple fireman was able to figure out some of the grammatical errors, which is kind of amazing. But ultimately, in the end, I want to see something that's that's concrete. And I'm a planning guy because it's important. And when we're not, if it's not a step crossed out in front of us, it makes me nervous. And to sit around here for another three, four years to find out, you know what, maybe this is or is not it. I, I, I'm just, I'm just not comfortable with it. I really am not comfortable with it. And it, and it has nothing to do on the reflection of the folks that are sitting in front of us. 
because I don't believe anybody does not want it to succeed. I don't believe anybody in this room doesn't want to see recycling at 75%. Our reuse being able to be recycled. And I think that's amazing, but ultimately, yeah, I want to make sure that we start off on a clean slate, and I think that's important. No. And, uh, okay. Do you think we could ask yeah. the representative to answer? Yeah. I think we haven't talked about it. I was just going, I was just okay. going there. Here, would you like, who wants to go first? I'll give it a shot. <laughs> first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Absolutely. And I, and I appreciate the concerns that you're actually bringing uh, up to us, uh, particularly the, the length of time. I, I don't want three years either. And in fact, Mayor Bogan, who's the, the new mayor, wants to get this done in a year. We, the last, you know, when we did, when we asked for the extension two years ago, um, we went to, you know, we knew we had to go through a process. And you have to, you know, you, you're in government. We know we have to go through that process. We, we frankly probably knew what the answer was before we, when we hired the consultants, as is off, as is often the case. But you have to go through that. Their recommendation was yes keep the Alpha 250. That's a valuable piece of property for all the cities and the county. Go to an independent district. You know, do it, there's a few things like, that they had mentioned. Yes, here's how you get, here's how you get to the 75%. So they, you know, they, it was worth going through the process, but I kind of, I think we kind of knew what, where they were going. You want to get out of the garbage business, business, but you're never out of garbage business. Your, your, your residents will always have garbage. And the, the fact of the matter is this county had a very good plan um, from 1986 of a way to deal with all the garbage. It had two big incinerators. It had flow control. Everything was going there. You know, and, and all of, we were taking care of all of our garbage in this county. 2013, the whole thing blows up. And, you know, everybody thinks, that, okay, we're going to get it cheaper. It's all going to work out. We're going to, you know, we're going to, it's all, you know, the... Uh, you know, the, the economy is going to make this work. It did. The fact of the matter is, garbage is going all over the place. We have no idea. And the, and the, the county is supposed to have somewhat control over that mm -hmm. and make sure that we take care of it. It's not happening right now. Our, our recycled rate has plummeted from 60 down to, down to 40%. The, our garbage is going all over the state. It's going to Arcadia. It's going to Okeechobee. Those places don't want it. And they're telling us, you, we're not taking your garbage anymore. So you, you need to figure it out. How, how, do, you, I, how do you explain, uh, we, I, unless the mayor wants to tell me something differently or one of the commissioners or our public works director, we don't seem to be feeling that. Pro I mean, our rates went up recently, a, yes. a little bit after negotiation. Right. But with the recycling, like, I haven't heard any issues with our rates or with our numbers going down. So as a city, I well, get that there's a collective good here, and okay. I, that's not lost on me, but we're not feeling it as a city, and maybe that's part of the problem. But, but the, 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 I just wanted to let the mayor okay. know. The, the, the word has it that um, because of single stream, the contamination rate of recycling has gone up tremendously, so that a lot of the, the things we recycle end up at, Mount Trashmore, they don't necessarily actually get recycled. So that's 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 a separate issue, right. but it's, it is an issue with our recycling. Okay. And all cities are facing that. Yeah. And, and, and the, the market on recycling materials has dropped dramatically. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 And the big part about, one of the reasons that the ORB blew up was that the cities didn't feel like they had control. They felt like the county was, was pushing it forward. Cities felt like you know, we're not, we're not, we don't have control of this. This is a whole different way of doing this. This is, this is, no, totally different. This is collective ownership. You all own that piece of property. We owned with it, along, we owned, with, along with we owned all it back the then. We owned it back then, though. I mean, the gut, that gets back to so, my concern about government. Like the, but the difference the operational is, method. you not only own it collectively at, with the cities, you have the opportunity to control the ownership of the mechanism of the disposal. You're going to be able to control your price collectively. Right now, you do not have control, and waste and, and other other waste management and others have been kind of hiking up the price considerably because they have, they essentially own almost every piece of uh, land. If this went for sale, believe me, waste okay. manager would be the first one trying to buy it. But we, but right, this gives us one of the reasons the the RV would have price stayed, stayed in, intact if we had owned those incinerators. If we had owned those. You know, and we and the county did, made the made the decision not to own them in the early because they didn't know the, if the if the uh, 
if they were safe. They didn't know if they were concerned about the liability issue. And they didn't so, maintain them. And they haven't maintained them. Oh, no, no, they, well, I, mean, I mean, the will operators were not maintained specifically. Oh, they were, well. but they were maintained beautifully. Ooh. They No, they were. That's why, because the RV made, ship made sure that all that, I, I've been there, I've looked I know, at I know. I did the inspection on the 1 or 48, so okay. don't. But no, they, they, you know, it, it was in their interest to make sure that money from the RV went there to make sure they stayed in good shape. When they, when they closed the incinerator, the one in Pompano. Right, uh, Deerfield. Yeah. It's actually Deerfield. Yeah. That, all of a sudden, there wasn't enough, there, you know, there wasn't enough without some really heavy duty recycling to be able to take care of this county. So we have to figure out a way. The only, we have three and a half million tons of garbage in this county. From, from, the county has about this much of that. The cities have by far the larger part of that. This is much more, to be honest, in the city's um, advantage, you know, interest to make sure that you have control over that. So you have control over the land, you have control over the mechanism. You don't have, you don't have to um, make a profit. You don't have to make a profit in garbage. You just have to provide the service. And that's what this is all about. When you look at what the, one of the recommendations is, is to either be an independent district or a dependent district. And our neighbor to the north, Palm Beach, has actually, you know, I, I'm a little envious of it because they've done such a good job. And they did it through a taxing district. They're, they're taxing their um, residents at $187 per unit. That is lower than all, all of the cities. Every single city except for Weston. You somehow got under that. Um, we, we, sure. yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we, we, but every, all the other cities, your total cost when you add up all your disposal costs is upwards of two to three hundred dollars. If you and, and it, it was on the Broward County agenda today because we had done an audit of every city, almost all of them around three fifty three eight. Now, if you know, if we're able to do something like that and be able to control that cost and not allow somebody else to determine that, you're going to be in much better shape. And besides the fact, you're going to be doing the right thing. It's up, this is one of the most environmentally progressive counties anywhere. And this allows us to take care, do with the, with the, with the recycling the, what we should be doing, and, and creating markets, being innovative about it, and, do, and doing the right thing. So I do ask you for the extension. I will tell you. There's all the, there, at the last meeting where almost every, every city was there, um, everybody, they, they asked, let's do a memorandum of understanding of, of being in support of the Arcadis recommendations. That puts us on the fast track. If everybody, once this passes the extension, people do a memorandum of understanding, this is not going to take three years. This is going to take, let's figure out, do you want an independent district? Do you want an independent district? Um, Who's going to decide, who's going to decide the city, that? The city is But what assurance, and respectfully, what assurances do we have that the cities will decide it? Because we're going to come back to the same fundamental you're question be, at the end. You're going to be, like, when we were in the room two weeks ago, three weeks ago, you had all the cities there, all of them making their, showing their concerns, and everybody being a part of it. Every single city being a part of it. But I'm talking like the ultimate, like, decision making, because what, what I would see, this passes tonight, which I yeah. to quite frankly don't know if it is or not, what I see happening is you will get, the, ex the, the extension will occur, mm -hmm. you will proceed with recommendations, with input from whoever wants to attend, basically, right. probably, and you will put together dependent district, independent district, with this kind of governing, you know, body, this is, you know, who will be the representatives, and it's then going to have to come back. I completely get that it's going to have to come back to the cities because there is going to ultimately have to be an amendment right. where all the cities agree that we will go back on the, quite frankly, what the original deal was. Let's right. be honest. The original deal was thou shalt sell Alpha 250 within a year. That was the original deal. And we will have to decide whether the mechanism that is put forward for this R, I keep calling it RRB Part 2. You probably don't like that, but it just helps me. RRB Part 2. Um, will be satisfactory, and I have no specifics with whether to, or no assurances other than kind of what's represented to me today that that organizational structure will be satisfactory enough to allow us to agree to retain that property permanently, and that's one of the whole. From the city's perspective, and listen, and be quite frankly, I've followed some of the, what you've done with Weston and. 
outsourcing and to have you here in support of it is not lost on me, quite frankly. So I will say that publicly. But. Good evening, Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Mr. City Manager, uh, Daniel Sturmer, the Mayor of the City of Weston, one of the six mayors on the working group. Um, so I understand the consternation. When the working group of mayors, let me hit that on, on that point and start with that, it was not about big cities. It was about those who were actively involved in the litigation who wanted to continue to be involved. It was open to everybody. I have lost track over the years of how many times I've actually spoken with your mayor about it because it's been a lot. Um, whenever your mayor has a question, he's not bashful about picking up the phone we know. and saying, yes. and, and he, I, I think he will confirm that every time he's asked a question, he's gotten an answer. Because this is about the cities in coordination with Broward County. How did we get here? We all know how we got here. Through the litigation a few, uh, that ended a few years ago, might we end up getting to RRB2 in some form, Mr. President? I won't say no. The question is, what is that form? And it will be done significantly different than it was back in the 80s. In the 80s, they created bonds that built facilities that we all paid for that we never owned. Problem one. So you ask, how did we get here today? We didn't own what we were paying for at the end of the term. And you're meaning the R, just so we're clear, the RRB owned, uh, RRB. No, no, at the end, Wheelabrator, or Wheelabrator the that had been owned. Yeah. We as taxpayers did have paid the bonds, and then it was sold and off. somebody else got to own it at the end. Yeah. So when you look at the structure back in the 80s, problem one. I'm convinced smarter county commissioners, smarter city elected officials are not going to make that mistake again. As to the First Amendment, the First Amendment in 2016, number two under now therefore for good and valuable consideration, number two, notwithstanding any provision to the contrary in the settlement agreement, the county and the city, the settling cities, agree to the sale of the Alpha 250 shall be delayed. The group of mayors didn't decide that. Everybody did that. It provided therein that the group of mayors could extend it right. an additional year. But the decision to delay the sale was done by every signatory, including this municipality, to the settlement agreement. So that wasn't a confined group of people. The confined group of people decided to extend that second year. We then got to where we sit today. To get to where we was, to get to the Arcata study, it required that there be a working group created. We'll take responsibility. We were somewhat slow appointing our three representatives from the city side because it's made up of six, three appointed by the settling cities, three appointed by the county. That took some time to get the right people who weren't involved in the business, who were going to look out for the city's best interest, to get there. It then was to get to work out with the county people and create the, six group, the, the, the group of six, to then have our cadets go out and do the study. As Commissioner Fur said, I'm not used to calling him Commissioner Fur, we knew at the end what the result was going to be. The Alpha 250 is a unique piece of property because there aren't many pieces of property left in this county that are conceivably publicly owned and zoned for what it needs to be zoned. Of course, this piece of property is zoned that could be a transfer station and among other uses. There's really no other property in this county to do that. So to sell this piece of property, which we all understand, whatever the value is, and different from before, as part of the settlement, the county used to own the property. We got it as part of the settlement, collectively. So the county is no longer the owner of that property. Collectively, we are, which is a significant difference. We control its destiny. We could say sell it today. My suggestion is we need to spend some more time deliberatively going through this process to decide what to do with that piece of property. It could be a transfer station. It could be a recycling station. It could serve a number of different uses to what would be a new system. We need to decide collectively, the two million people who live in this county, what we're going to do with our garbage, not for today, for the next 50 years. That's what we're embarking on. And I would humbly suggest to you that process is still going to take us a couple of years. I'm not going to pull any wool over anybody's eyes. It's not going to be done in a year. It won't be. 
to come up with an organizational structure for a district. First, have to decide dependent, independent. Go to the legislature. Well, we know how receptive the legislature may be to creating a new taxing district. I say that sarcastically because they might not be. But if we walk up there with holding hands between Broward County and its cities to say we understand it, we're the responsible ones with it, we'll get to take the blame for it, they might be more receptive. Create a dependent district. I'll say this with two county commissioners sitting here. There's distrust for Broward County. We all have it. Commissioner Long used to be the vice chair of the planning council and I sat next to him as the secretary. Okay, so small cities are involved. Commissioner Johnson, we sat on the MPO for years together. Okay, I have, a, as you can tell, a big mouth, so I ascended to the chair for a few years. But you know what? It's about us working collaboratively, whether it's on the planning council, whether it's on the MPO, whether it's through the Broward League of Cities. And where we're going to go that will determine the next 50 years and where our garbage goes, flow control. We need to do that. Right now, there is no flow control. We could create a significant district if we all decided we were going to direct where our garbage goes. Your hauler controls the facilities. They own the landfills. How do we have the cheapest? Well, we sort of try to create a mousetrap differently than everybody else. And when the prices went down, ours, we just redid our contract and our numbers went up back significantly. Of course, there's really no market for recycling. The commodity, recycling is a commodity, and the foreign interests that used to buy it aren't buying it anymore. Some other cities in Broward County have decided to move away from recycling. This is one of those that it's taken us years to convince our residents to do. If we say stop, we're not going to be able to go back five years from now and say, could you please start again? Might we be better off to say, instead of putting all your recyclables in that blue bin, just do glass and aluminum? can't really contaminate glass and aluminum if it, unless you don't clean it. But with paper and cardboard, put it in your pizza box. If you don't take out the slip sheet that has the oil on it, you've just contaminated a whole bunch of paper. So can we do it smarter? Yes. But we need to do it sitting at a table. For those of you that were in Sunrise a number of years ago, it's a rather big table. <laughs> and part of the issue becomes, and it's like it was last month, it becomes a difficult conversation when you put 150 elected officials in a room okay. to accomplish anything. No, no, but that's, uh, it is. I get it, I get it. It's tough enough when we sit on boards that have 19 people to get 19 people to move in a direction. But we are moving cohesively and together with regard to the term of the extension. Can I and, think before, you, before you move on, can I ask, just to fill what? back on one of the things you pointed out. I'm also having a little, kind of, I've heard from both of you now, that everybody knew that the finding of Arcadis, and like, it was almost like predetermined that we needed to hold on to this Alpha 250 property. And why did the original settlement agreement contemplate selling it within a year? I, I, I just, part of it, because part of it wasn't in, in the legal community, sometimes short deadlines create pressures. No punches pulled with you. Yeah. So short deadlines create I know. You hold pressure. I, I know, I know what you're saying. The problem becomes with 32 governments, okay, with 32 equal governments having this conversation. And I say that knowing, you know, Beam and, my, Beam and I, we, when, with the, kids don't, the, the cities don't sit at the kids' table anymore. We all sit at the adult table together. And that's what this conversation is about today, where in the 80s it wasn't that way. One other answer. You might not. You might not also not have needed it as much had the other incinerator not been dismantled. I mean, we have a significant and issue. The time. Right. When Wheel of Raider shuts down the north, the, the north facility, directs everything to the south, and oh by the way, they haul in trash from other parts of southeast Florida, which then don't allow us to get in because they say they don't have the capacity. Sticker shock. I get sticker shock. But part of the sticker shock is to build an entire new facility. You might not have to build an entire new facility. You could add a new boiler to the South facility. We direct the flow control. We could say to them, you're not taking somebody else's Monroe County or Miami-Dade County stuff. You're taking the 700,000 tons that we're going to generate, and it's going there. So there are things we could do. But has there become a, monopol a monopolistic approach to owning every part of the system by one very green company, who I believe is your trash hauler? 
The answer is yes. So part of it becomes where it's somewhat of a disadvantage. We're trying to create the next best mousetrap for our communities, including Lighthouse Point. Large, small. This isn't about large or small. Your residents and my residents, they just want to put their garbage at the end of the driveway. You know, some truck is going to come down the road, pick it up, and take it and dispose of it responsibly. They don't really care, most people, don't really care where it goes as long as that happens and they don't have to pick up the mess afterwards. We're trying to figure out, which is part of the next process. Commissioner, I'll look straight at you and I'll say, is it going to be a quick decision to what the process is going to be? No, because there's going to be disagreement, dependent, independent. How to go about doing it. We've talked already. I've had conversations with my manager and my city attorney, who are two of the people who are involved with the working group, to say, what do we need to do now to start that process? Do we have to create an organizational group that later would become the overseer of this new district? That's here. That's concerned me. But, 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 wait a second. You just, you but, didn't. but Mr. President, you have to. You have to because this isn't just going to happen among 32 governments that everyone's going to sit at the table and agree. We have to start planning and we have to start creating what would be the organizational documents, including how all 32 governments participate in that. But, no, but you have to start doing that and that then means getting your city attorney on the phone with 31 other city attorneys and he's going to fight for your interest. So you, we all know that that will take some time. But what I heard you say, but what I heard you say, and maybe I just heard it wrong, or, is that you have to start with a small group. I get that you can have analysis by paralysis, which somebody I think, said up here at one point. But if I hadn't, I'll say it. <laughs> analysis by paralysis. Um, but that that group would then morph to the no, government. No, 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 no. And that's, that's no. What I'm saying is, we there, there needs to be created. Um, a framework, a I framework guess that then would evolve into, hopefully in time, the governing structure of what would come, using your phrase, RRB2. And what, I, what, so I, what, I, would, what I want to say is I really believe strongly that a small city representative has to have a seat at the big boy table and, and the me, big girl table. And I'll answer that directly. Okay. The, original, the original group of five mayors, Mayor Messam, myself, Mayor Ryan, Mayor Seiler, and... Uh, Mayor, no, before it was Mayor um, Boker. When we started the conversations again about a year and a half ago, our friends over in Coconut Creek said, we need to be at the table. Mary Blasey and the Coconut Creek mayor are now part of it because now the decision is made not by five mayors, by six mayors. By six mayors. Now, I'm one of those that sort of cautions when Coconut Creek speaks and I say, are you looking at it on behalf of 1.8 million people or because this is in your backyard? And I say that respectfully to them, but they have a parochial interest. I said their parochial interest can't drive the rest of us. That my, and I'm constant in that because it's very personal to them. To us, it's a bigger issue. Um, so there is a small city. In addition, there's nothing you all have actually missed. To be clear, I read the report, so I agree with you. No, no, no. <laughs> meeting, meeting, meeting-wise, you know, meeting-wise, since the First Amendment was done, there's really been nothing done that we've met with, except for discussing this new amendment and receiving the report. You haven't missed anything. So please, I can assure you. And if you want more communications, we can do that. The Broward League of Cities has a solid waste task force. From what I hear, the chair likes to communicate a lot. We will make sure that happens. Oh, I'm the chair. Um, so I will make sure that happens. So please, um, we stand and ask for your support to join hands with the rest of the cities in Broward County to let us walk through this process on the length of it. And then I'll sit down. I want you to have the time we, we discussed the length of this. And we said if we make it a short period of time and we're not done, to go back out, we're going to get your six questions to say, from the six of you to say, you had two years, now you had two more, why do you need two more? And we made them one year terms in an effort to say if nothing's done in year one and by year two we're frustrated, we could stop it in year two. We could. That's why we did specifically year extension terms so it wouldn't go on with no activity. Specifically. Because the original conversation was we do a three and then a two. 
I mean, you could have offered to come back and you could have come, well, offered to come back to the entire yeah, well, that, city that was, that, that, that was my thing also that, you know, listen, if you really wanted the three years, you've got to come back around and said, hey, listen, we need another year. We're, this, we're this, happened, progress. This, this happened over the summer and because we thought we would be further along. But again, we take responsibility of we were slow in the uptake. So now we're doing it to a place where we're doing it specifically in one year increments to say we can, sl we can get out if we choose to. So okay. um, we'd ask for your unanimous support to join the rest of the cities in this county along with the county to move this forward. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. I'm sure the attorney has something he wanted out, I think. Just want to let you know, I just got a text from Carrie that Wilton Manor's passed it tonight unanimously. So they're one so of the... So you're basically just up in our leverage? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I just, no, I mean, I'm not a poker player, but I can't. <laughs> you basically just put your cards on. Today. I'm just sharing the information. Jenny, I'll, 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 I'll let you... And, and I'll say it straight to a firefighter's face. You can take it one of two ways. No, that's all right. Um, no, no, meaning you can take the leverage one of two ways. Um, it could either be something really good, or we know what happens sometimes when people try to do that, and the response to that isn't good. And please don't um, don't misunderstand me. No, I don't. I don't misunderstand. Um, and I'm not all. trying to project something I'm not. But part of it is we are doing this as a unified community, and that's why we'd ask for your support. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner, is there anything else? No, I'd say. In the interest of moving things along, I think we know where we want to go. That's just oh, a good question. You want to, um, that next, you, you have it for discussion yeah. because the, okay. the consensus, uh, we we're trying to determine whether the consensus, whether you want to move forward with consideration of the resolution this evening, if that's the will of the commission, you can move on to item number two. Yeah, is that, that's the will of the commission. Does it sound like we're going to have a motion to read and a, and a potential motion to approve? That's the way I would sum it up. Okay, then we'll move on to, thank you very much. Thank all you of for everybody coming out. Not, thank you for the hard work. It's not, I'll be the first to admit it's not an easy issue. Uh, I'll be the first to admit that. So uh, agenda item number two is a resolution approving the second amendment to settlement agreement in litigation styled City of Sunrise versus Broward County. Uh, I guess we should go through the motion. City of Motion Marie. Second. Okay. A resolution of City Commission of the City of Idaho, County, Florida, approving the second amendment, amendment to the settlement agreement with Broward County for litigation styled City of Sunrise at all versus Broward County, providing for severability complex and effective date. Further discussion, none being around, I would offer a motion to pass that resolution as read. Second. We have a motion, we have a second to approve resolution 2018-2244. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Nay. Motion passes 3-2. Good luck. Thank you. I hope it works. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Good to see you. Thank 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 you. That's it. Now comes for those patiently waiting. Um, oh, sorry. No, it's three number three. Three number three. Thank you. <laughs> Resolution approving. I guess Chief probably wants his advanced enhanced marine law enforcement grant. So. Agenda item number three, resolution approving submittal of an application for an enhanced marine law enforcement grant for fiscal year 2019-2020. Chief McConnell. Good evening, Commissioner. <coughs> Happy holidays to you. Thank you. Uh, I'm asking for uh, approval for a resolution approving the submittal to, uh, of an application for an enhanced marine law enforcement grant. As you all know, uh, I think this is the 25th year that we've been applying for grant money to Broward County for uh, uh, a method of improving boating safety, not only in Broward County, but also through our waterways here at Lighthouse Point. The grant provides funding for a police officer to be out on a boat on Saturday and Sundays and also for a two-man patrol one night during the week. Uh, the grant is for $57,000. It, it is not a matching grant. It's uh, uh, fully paid through Broward County. And tonight I'm requesting that the Commission adopt a resolution approving the submittal of the application for the Enhanced Marine Law Enforcement Grant for fiscal year 2019-2020 and authorizing the proper city officials to execute the necessary documents. 
Did you have a motion to read? Motion to read. Second. You read me? My Commissioner Mocker seconded by Commissioner Long. We just use single words. Yeah, just grunts. Yeah. One grunts means go. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, approving submittal of an application of our County Marine Advisory Committee for implementation of projects pursuant to the Enhanced Marine Law Enforcement Grant Government under the fiscal year 2019-2020, authorized and proper city officials to execute the related documents and authorizing the expenditure of funds if the funds are awarded to the city, providing for an effective date. Discussion, Commissioner. Seeing no discussion, I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 2018-2245 for enhanced marine controls. Second. We have a motion. We have a second by Commissioner Johnson on Resolution 2018-2245. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Now, I think we're actually done. It comes to public comments and requests from the floor regarding anything. Um, so come forward, state your name and your address, and uh, you can address the commission, and you will have three minutes. Dealer's choice. Go ahead. Go on up. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Cindy Mano, M-A-N-N-O. Um, I live in Fort Lauderdale, but more than half of my waking life is at 2701 Northeast 42nd Street we'll and Lighthouse Point. Okay. And I was here last week um, about the Yacht Club. Anyway, if I listen to this workshop and I hear the same thing time and time again, and everybody's in favor of the Yacht Club, um, being rebuilt. Why? Because we're like family there. And it's a very emotional place. Um, and it's all attached to that club inside this, you know, town. Most of the members have been raised here, started their families here. Most of them have had their weddings uh, at the club. Um, that's Gina and Vito have been there 25, 20 years as employees. Um, they do all the holidays there, Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, baby showers, memorial services. Um, I'm talking generations of families. Uh, we do most of the community events and fundraisers there as well. Um, and those are the biggest events we do. Not to mention that every night, three to four times a night, people come there for their birthdays, you know, um, graduations, everything. Um, Retirements. They've established relationships with the longtime staff, which is where I come in. I've been there for 12 years. My sister Sari's worked there for 20 years. Um, Patty in the office, she's been there for 30 years. Some of us, um, 43 years of service at that club. Um, there's Jason, there's, um, there's Gary, all the, everybody who makes that place work. And we're part of this community as well. Um, we have a great relationship with members and people who live here in this town. You all know that. Um, and I spend half my waking life here. Um, so the Young Club is like Grandma's house, okay? Grandma's house has fallen down. When it rains, we have to run around the lobby and put pickle buckets in the lobby because the roof is leaking so badly. Um, I could go on and on about the disrepair of that building, but I will say, um, if a hurricane comes along, it's going to knock Grandma's house to the ground, and there'll be no more club. And with that being said, we need a new club, and it needs rebuilt. Um, and I think if Terry Patterson's willing to do that and put all that work and all the profits from whatever he is permitted to build there, um, I think you should let him do it. Um, when you enter the property, there's the tennis courts. They're an eyesore. You know, the fences are all kind of broken down. And there's the run-down old dirty parking lots. Nobody wants to look at that. But if you have a, uh, the townhouses, at least there's beautiful um, landscaping and beautiful buildings to look at. Um, so again, these meetings, you know, I see the seal above your head, 1956. It's amazing. That club was built in the 1960s early. And... Um, that started the heart beating in this, in this community. And everybody built around that club. There's a reason for that. And I would certainly like to see it rebuilt. 
and then get that heart beating again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I do want to say, uh, to, if you could, please give Terry a chance, because I know how he treated us when he took over the business, that the Mandersons had owned it for 44 years. Um, he's kept our seniority intact, the employees that work there. Um, he made sure we kept our health care, our 401k. He honored our accrued vacations. He didn't have to do any of that. So he treats us like family. And I remember the first day I met him, he walked into that club and he had no idea. He was coming there to look at it as a marina. And he looked at me and he said, I had no idea all this was here. And I said, all what? And he said, all this? I came to look at a marina. And that day he fell in love with it. He fell in love with this neighborhood. He fell in love with that property. He plans on living here, retiring here, handing that business over to his family. That's how much he cares about it. And he couldn't figure out why people paid money to come and join the club and pay monthly dues until he met us. And then he fell in love with us as well, the family, the staff that works there. And there's 85 jobs that I'm talking about. I need, I need to give you one more minute. Okay. okay. There's 85 jobs I'm talking about, and you all have been there uh, to parties, weddings, you know, community events. And I just take it, take it into consideration that this man has been very good to us, and he's very conscious about this community as well and what he plans to do. And just trust him a little more. Thank you so much for letting me speak. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. And have a nice holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments regarding anything? Everett Marshall, 2821 Northeast 44th Street. Last commission meeting I came here uh, making everybody, I assume, aware of the batting cage situation with our recreation. I was wondering if we've made any progress. Have we, Becky, have we made progress? I reached out to uh, two contractors that I've heard one today and just finally got a response that they would come and get us a quote. So I've been still waiting to get three quotes so we can, and also working on a couple of work projects to see what the, the funding will get in. Okay, so you can call me Jennifer Lawrence because I'm going to come every commission meeting and continue to ask because I, I don't want sidewalks. I just want, and I'm going to bring the kids. I will bring the kids. I will bring the kids if we don't get something going. So, all right. Have a nice holiday. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good holiday, Mr. Marshall. Anybody else? Public comment? Only once, only twice. Close public comment. Go to communications from commissioners. Anybody have anything? Uh, just one thing. Uh, You're not commissioner. I asked for commission. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, go ahead. Correct. <laughs> 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 I'll go last. I, I, go uh, I won't steal what I believe the mayor was about to say. Uh, <laughs> but what I will talk about was uh, the fact that I went to the building department today. I was doing a formal permit for a fence and. Uh, I was talking to the office of Sherry, and they're very helpful as always. They had about five people at the counter working each person through an, each different problem that they were coming into. But uh, they actually I found out they are now accepting credit cards as of yesterday. The billing department is now accepting credit cards. I thought it was kind of interesting. There, there is a fee for it, but uh, just kind of changing what was going on. But again, the billing department had five people behind the desk, three ladies working it, and tell you what, they didn't stop there for at least the 45 minutes that I was there to get the permit uh, moving through. So I do appreciate that, and also it's kind of interesting. Sherry wanted me to remind everybody they do uh, notary there, so you can get all your stuff together specifically as you're doing your owner builder stuff. So thank you to the building department. I also wanted to make sure we thanked everybody for Lighthouse Point of Glow. What a great turnout it was, as always. Weather somewhat cooperated. It could have used like five degrees cooler, but you know. Besides that, I think it was really good. Our Santa was definitely top shelf. Yeah. Phenomenal Santa, definitely flew in from the North Pole with that uh, the jolly good old red Thanks. cheeks. Yeah, a little thin, a little thin. A little I thought uh, I like to call him fat. He's still, still working out. But thank you.
<laughs> and happy holidays to everybody. Yeah. Anything else from the commissioners? Vice Commissioner. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought the uh, event was very nice. The lighthouse is low. Um, did have a chance to talk to Rabbi and just wanted to bring it to our attention. I think that uh, it would be nice if we sit down with them. They do have a couple concerns that have been brought up and just want to make sure that uh, we take a look at them. I think that, uh, you know, having our Christmas tree and the menorah and the uh, major scene, I think there's some things that we need to look at just to make sure we're doing it the right way and we're being fair to everybody. And, uh, you know, we, we pride ourselves on religious freedoms and I think it's important we listen to some of them, so let's take this opportunity to maybe correct some defici deficiencies we may have over there, uh, especially with the manure. Okay. No objection there. Um, there? Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm sorry, Sandy. Probably good. Yeah. Uh, just thanks everyone tonight for the uh, careful consideration of uh, the one agenda item. That was uh, very good to watch everybody work through that. Um, last glove. Uh, Thanks to Public Works, Recreation Department, Police, everyone that was part of that. Uh, again, a team, great team effort to get everything done. And, uh, and it really was another great event in our city. Um, we, uh, our Boy Scout troop uh, found out uh, a few days ago we have another Eagle Scout. Uh, he went made it through his border review. So we'll be having another celebration for him probably right after the first of the year. And since I am often politically incorrect when it comes to holidays, I am going to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah and a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas nope. and happy Hanukkah to everybody. I thought, sorry, I thought the mayor was going to mention we did have a new uh, part-time employee. Well, they're coming to the next meeting, so I was saving it. Yeah, but I was just going to mention that we do have a new part-time employee in the rec department who was uh, helping out last night's soccer game. And Josie is correct if I said it properly. Thank you. Jose. Jose, sorry. That's why I knew it was. But uh, new Excellent, did a great job. We saw him through five football in the NFL. But it's great to see the mayor and uh, Becky coming together to try to get them some help over there. So I do appreciate it to the mayor for getting us another person on board. Thank you very much, Bob. All right. Call it quits on 2018, and hopefully we have a just as productive, collaborative, wonderful, healthy, healthy 2019. Are we all in favor of that? We all in all favor of that. that. All right. Okay. Aye. 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 And we're adjourned. Don't go to